You're welcome to the Detox Podcast. Hello, hello everybody. It's your boy Kawes Ahmed and uh, this is the Direction Talks Podcast. So um, today, I'm, with, I'm in the studio with my boy Magezi Mahad, a professional lawyer, and we want to see, we want to talk about what lawyers can, how lawyers can serve the society, how lawyers can help the community, and uh, yeah, introduce yourself. This is Magezi Mahad, lawyer by profession, and uh, I'm here with my boy to talk about what lawyers can actually offer to society. Um, you know, we wouldn't really jump so fast on the on the topic, but I really want to draw us back in the law school. So I want you to explain to us how it was in the four years chasing your degree. How 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 was it really? Um, being a lawyer is uh, initially you have, you need to attain a four years degree, and. Uh, of course, everyone knows a four years degree is not a joke. People so, call it long and stuff, but <laughs> it's attainable. Yeah, we, 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 I, I was really asking, how did you go through the, lo- the four years? Because it's really long. You know, most of the courses here in Uganda f- mm. are three years, and you guys go ahead and do one more year. So I want to know, how was it? You know, lawyer, being a lawyer is not easy, and we know you, you have to read a lot of books. So... Just want to know how how you kept yourself so focused and uh, patient to go through the four years to become what you are today. Uh, I think I would probably summarize that in about three things. One, hard work. You have to work hard. The right. coursework keep coming, the papers keep coming. It, it reaches a point and it's the order of the day. So you have to keep up. Second, you must persevere through all those situations. There are times when there's a lot of pressure. There are times when uh, the pressure is a bit mounted on you, pushed at you. You need to just persevere through all that, keep up the hard work, and then have the ambition. You know, it's always better to do something when you love it. Yeah, yeah. So passion helps a lot. Yeah, passion is very important. So that's what kept you in the, yeah. you know, focus. So I, you know, university is so, so, so crazy. You know, we, mm. we've, we've all been there and we've seen the excitement, you know, the parties and all that. And uh, so I want to know, you, how did you overcome the distractions, you know, in the four years? Because, you know, girls, uh, parties, you know, hangouts. And, you know, stay true to, to the lawyer commission, like, Stay straight to the books. Um, like I said before, it's a long course. So, the moment you have, because personally, I'm, I'm very passionate about the law. Very passionate. It's what I've always wanted to be. So, in the long run, you just end up making yourself focus amidst all the parties, the clubbing, and, you know, all such stuff. You just need to keep the focus up it's okay to have fun once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to go. know because we, we have this... Of course I party. This, this, <laughs> this stereotype, like, lawyers are always, you know, your bookworms, your boards, so you're yeah. always reading hard. So we, I really wanted to know, didn't you get, like, any any free time, you know, to hang out, go, go to the beach, maybe party sometimes, you know? We want to know that. Personally, um, I've always been a party person. So, I love parties. So you you had parties so, in the four I years. Of course, I had parties because it's, it's, it's I love it. So having the parties doesn't mean I'm going to go off my my actual passion. You can have the best of both worlds. So um, in a way. Yet again, I really want to know what was the hardest thing. You know what what what. What difficulties did you face in the four years, you know, being a lawyer, studying all these books and doing all these coursework? Because I've been with you along the way. You know, you used to study even on the weekend. So I 
want to know how easy or how hard did it get? I think it all gets down to making yourself not snap because the more the more you go on, I mean, year one is always a bit more of introduction, year two things get a bit tougher, then year three, year four, same story. But then, provided you don't make yourself snap, because, I mean, if you over-focus, still you can crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you must take things, everything at a time. So it if was... it's time to go have fun, have that fun, and then get back to business. So you were a guy who had everything figured out. Right? Uh, By the start of the day, like, I'm going to do this, do this, do this. Like, you have an entire program with the entire math, and... Uh, and uh, you, you try to keep things balanced, not to do a lot of books, but at the same time, not to, to party a lot. Yeah, pretty and, uh, much. Keep pretty everything much. in uh, mm, equilibrium. Yeah. All right. Trying to balance life. And... So, really, how was it? I would say it's. Uh, it was a hell of a struggle. <laughs> a hell of a struggle. But then I made it. So, that means everyone else can. So, are you proud of yourself? Yeah, very proud. Four years. <laughs> <laughs> four years, man. I'm telling you, if you want to be a lawyer, four years is a long time. Four years yeah, of yeah. endurance, tough endurance. You know, so how many pages of books, if, uh, how many pages have you read? Like, uh, 2,000? 4,000? 10,000 pages? I, I, I lost track in about your one. Yeah, one year two. I lost track of the pages or the books. Um, you know, it just reached a point and it reading was kind of part of life. You just have to make yourself. Because, I mean, a good lawyer is one who knows what the law is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you must keep up. So you know the whole constitution in your head? Not necessarily, but yeah, I'm, you know a bit of it. I'm almost there. So, um, you know, um, I really want to know how... So you're done with school. Yes. What what what's next? You no, know? tell me what's next. Um, attaining the four-year degree of law is not enough in Uganda. Yeah, yeah. You need to attain the practicing certificate that right. is given at the law development center, and you know th th there's there's a process you go through. Law development center, you do pre-entries, you're admitted, then you kick off with the practicing bit. They guide you into how the actual practice in Uganda goes on. So the four years at law school has to be coupled with a practicing certificate at LDC. Which takes nine months, huh? Which takes about nine months. Roughly a year, but nine months. But then again, that doesn't mean that uh, if you have the four years of law school, you can't do anything. You cannot yet. support society in any way. You cannot offer anything to society. All right. Because so, I mean, that's where the topic comes in. Yeah. So you you studied law for four years. And, uh, you were conversant with most of it. Yeah. yeah. Because what I hear is, uh, all this is more of practical stuff and uh, sure. just a recap of. The four years, mm, you yes. know, summaries in a year. Um, what, what can you offer right now? Uh, to start with, uh, having a four-year law degree mm. is just enough to kickstart your own give back to society. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are very many ways, various ways, in which. You can always contribute to your society or even the nation as well. You, you know why I'm asking? Because, you know, if, for example, if you don't go to LDC, you know, it feels like a limitation and uh, people tend to, to, you know, to fall out and they say, I didn't go to LDC so I cannot do anything. So four years tends to be a waste. So I want to know what really can you offer even though, because, you know, we want to, to find the right... We, we, I was going say, you know, direction be your own campus. So we want people to know that even if you don't go to LDC, you know, there are very, very many other opportunities maybe you can venture in. 
from what you've been studying the four years because four years cannot go to a west because you didn't attain you know, the certificate from LDC. So can you can you tell us some of the things you know somebody can do to change their lives and be productive you know out of the four years despite the, the LDC certificate? Uh, personally, I need to be quoted right here. Yeah, these are your words, eh? Yeah, I need to be quoted <laughs> right. Personally, LDC is a must for all lawyers. It's a must. Like, for practice in Uganda, it's a must. You must have it. But then, that doesn't mean that you not having it, you're a misfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the law, that's, that's what we want to, yeah, yeah, to explain. It doesn't mean you're a misfit in the law fraternity. No, you're not. Yeah, now, now let's Having talk. a four years experience yeah, because is just enough. Most of, the, most of the lawyers that are prominent mm, mm. have done it, have, have attained the LDC yes, certificate. Yes. But what else can you do and become as strong as them and perform and compete you know, in the, in the law fraternity even though you don't have that certificate? That's what we, I want you to explain to me. Um, I grew up believing going along with the perception that for one to be a lawyer, they have to go to court. They must have audience in court. Yeah, that's the order of the day, and that's that what is the we, perception. we grow up knowing, yes. you know. But then, when you're in law school, they always make you venture into other spheres outside court. Other spheres, other ways of earning a living, other ways of offering, laying a stone, on, on a foundation in society. Yeah, yeah. In a way. I mean, I've seen lawyers who are researchers. I've seen lawyers who are academi into academia. Because being a lawyer does not only entail one to go to court specifically. There are ways you can venture into education, be a lecturer of sort. Mm. You can write legal books, guide people, and educate them on the law and what it actually offers. Um, you can as well... You know, I've seen legal advisors you know, for yeah, companies, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Legal advisors as well. And uh, these guys have not gone to LDC. So this is, this is a very important topic for everybody that is doing law. So if you don't get a chance to, to do LDC, there are very many branches you can you can tap into to stay relevant in community. What, what we, we are so scared of is uh, thinking that you're limited and uh, it's what we do at Direction. We, and that, we, is, that is what has affected most people. Yeah, yeah, so people back, back out and uh, feel sorry for themselves, you know, and I know very many people that have done four years of law and uh, they are doing trade. Fads. Yeah, they are out of the, the entire... Out, out of the law yeah, sphere. The, yeah, law sphere. They're totally out there. They forgot about the books. And uh, they you know they cannot help anybody in any way concerning law because they don't have the certificate. So that is really important. I would really would love you to dig deep explain to us some of the things you know you can really do and explain it broader you know detailed like you can do this and do this and do this and do this at least you know something that somebody can pick on even right now from hearing this podcast and say let me do this you know because we always say do you can you start with... They, I have a friend of mine who tells me all, all the time, mm. can we do with or without? And uh, it means even if you don't have, for a lawyer, even if you don't have the certificate, can you do something? It and uh, yeah. society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think first and foremost, people should know that LDC is a practice thing. I mean, most of the work is done in the foyers. Yeah, yeah. A lawyer is groomed in the foyers. 
However, there is also grooming at the parkos, which is offered at which is offered at Law Development Centre. So, when you have the four years, you are entitled, you're free to offer legal services in any way, in as far as the law is concerned. However, attaining court audience is done after you have attained the BACOS certificate. So roughly, the practicing certificate. you don't become an attorney. You cannot become an advocate. An advocate. However, you are a lawyer. But being an advocate is taking that extra step to mm. do the BACOS. To do the BACOS, to be able to stand in court. Be able to court. stand in court and have audience given to you. Okay. Yeah. So you, let's talk about you now. You know, you don't have the BACOS now. What are you doing? Right now, um, I don't have the purpose, like I said. But then, that doesn't mean I cannot offer anything to society. I mean, I'm engaging in humanitarian work. I'm doing a bit of writing here and there to prosper my legal thinking and, you know, guide society in a way well, in a way to, on how to go about legal matters, on how to go about uh, what what the law offers because very many people in Uganda don't really know their rights. Alright, um, this is an advert of a project that we are carrying on in the direction. This is a, we are giving back to society so we will love everybody to contribute to this. Uh, you you all walk around town and you see these young kids with their mothers, you know, that sleep on the streets. So we are thinking of giving back and uh, we have started slowly. So every evening we cook porridge and give to the kids and their mothers. So if you want to contribute to this, you can uh, search for Direction on, the, on Facebook or you follow Direction and subscribe to the, the Direction uh, direction page or channel on the on uh, on YouTube, YouTube, you know, to 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 contribute to this, you know, porridge that can feed over a hundred people is uh, over ten thousand. What is that maximum you like saying? <laughs> Say it. There's always you, someone cannot work on an empty stomach. Yeah, yeah. You cannot and, uh, think with an empty stomach. So if we want to help people attain direction, they cannot be hungry, you know, because you know, I was in this oh, this foundation and I read something that uh, a hungry stomach is a foolish mind. Yes. So if you're hungry, you cannot think straight. Yeah, and I know if we were hungry, we wouldn't be talking here because we'll be sketching for what to eat or we'll be sitting under some shed and crying maybe or waiting for somebody to lend a hand. So because direction we give out knowledge so we want people to attain this knowledge and learn from us maybe even advise us more but we know we cannot help people show them direction if they're hungry so this initiative is giving those people that sleep in the streets that live in the streets that have nothing that are homeless those kids and their mothers that are breastfeeding them that are just studying how to studying walking you know those young kids to have something for supper so we giving them a basic need and we're giving them, life. you know, we're giving them porridge every evening to see that, you know, they can have something that, so that they can sleep peacefully, they can sleep warm. You know, it gets cold sometimes and, you know, it's very hard in town to get something to eat. It's not like any other village, you know, here in Uganda we do it. So we give them porridge and uh, we are calling everybody to, to come and contribute to this. You know, you can come with uh, five kilos of uh, maize flour or you can... Contribute with money on uh, Airtel Money 0703 or you contact us on uh, on this email med.joz at gmail.com if you have something to contribute or you can just call us you know if you want to lend a hand or be part of this because we are calling everybody you know Uganda we need to help ourselves you know feed ourselves we can do a lot as ourselves before waiting for anybody to come and show us the way. You know, we 
we have the internet, we have the knowledge, we've gone to school. So if we, 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 we come together, we can make a difference. We can, I, I'm thinking we can even maybe make a, make a home in the future, contributed by us, you know, not anybody else. Yeah, yeah, so we're calling everybody to this porridge project. We call it Zero Starving t Today. So nobody should go hungry. At least let's eat porridge, which is good. You know, it's healthy, it's young, it's good for the kids, and we are especially helping Actually, the mothers. My my lecturer the, used to have, used to say, he had a saying of sort. When we were in class, I remember he told us, you do not need to be a lawyer to impact society. Yeah, that's true. So aside the whole law of being a doctor, engineer, and all sorts of things, you must have that one thing that makes you stand out. That one thing that makes you, that enables society to view you in a different aspect or in an improved aspect. Yeah. And with direction, we're trying to do this. Yeah, we, we, we don't do this for a show off. We don't do this for money. You know, we are digging deep in our pockets that are, that are, that are narrow, <laughs> they're shallow, you know. So we would love, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would love everybody who can, you know, come and be part of this. We do it slowly by slowly, you know. We hope those kids, you know, look healthy, live healthy, sleep well, and their mothers, because these are the, this is the future, you know. If we don't lend a hand, these are the people that are going to, to, you know, to, to beat us down for our yes. phones, mm. you know, if we don't show them the right way now, because we use this opportunity as we give out porridge, we talk to them, we advise them. And I think if we do it for some time, we're going to, these kids are going to grow up in our faces and, and with, with our advice. So grooming is a tough process yeah, and it's yeah. very long. You know, someone doesn't get molded in a day. Yeah, and, Molding is gradual. And most of the lessons, so, on the streets mm. are wrong. Yes. So it's us, Better people that come from homes, to go to the streets and make a difference. You know, we can help. We can, it's it's going to be hard for us to help people that are that are grown up, like 17, 16. You know, they they most of them are already wasted. Although we we talk to them too, mm. but it's easy to talk to a kid who is like two years, and you grow up. They grow up listening to our advice and with direction, I think, by the time they're like 15, 16, they'll be professionals. They'll be young professionals that can do anything, you know. So it's what, so we're using this opportunity of giving them porridge, you know, to create friendship, to create a bond, to make them feel their love. Make their, them feel love. Yeah. Mm. So to, to, you know, to make a difference at the end of the, at the, end of the day. So, um. You know, let's go back to the topic. That was a break, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's uh, that has been good advice for anybody that is uh, is a lawyer or yes. somebody who has done the four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else can you add on as we wind up? Um, I think all I wanted to say has already been said. Okay. By what I've said, what you have said. But finally, I would like to say, just like my lecturer told me a while back, I needed to add something, give back to society, add value to society. This is my own way of adding value to society. So I urge every other person to do the same. I mean, if I can add to society, what about someone else? So today, we we had a lawyer in the studios, Magezi Mahad. You can follow him on Facebook, Twitter. You know, he's there, Instagram. He has some cool photos. You need to go and follow <laughs> that, you know. And uh, you need to check out Direction, which is on Facebook and uh, YouTube. We have a channel there. And uh, still, in Direction, you can still find the YouTube uh, videos and the podcasts in our Facebook account. So you, do, you guys, you should go there, listen to the previous podcasts. And uh, if you want to contribute, you know where to find us. It's been a pleasure hosting you. And uh, I hope you...
come back next time to discuss something different yeah, or something to add on, sure. you know. Yeah, as time goes on. Yes. And uh, for all their lawyers, I would love to say that, you know, don't only stand in court because let's talk about this. You know, lawyers are seen as thieves now, you know. We don't trust lawyers anymore. It's all a, it's, it's a money thing, you know. I become a lawyer to become rich. In a, in a few seconds, what do you say about that? Because it's like the image is being tarnished and the profession is going wrong. True, the image is under risk right now. Risk of being tarnished. But then it all goes down to the values someone has. I mean, if, if you are brought up in a right way, you cannot think of engaging in something legal to fraud, defraud someone. Yeah, I mean, charging, uh, if, defraud. if you have your values, it's all about having values in life. Who you are. Knowing who you are. That is the most important thing. Be it a lawyer, be it any other person. Provided you know who you are, you can direct yourself out of such fraudulent circumstances. So that is direction there for you. Uh, thank you everybody for what for for listening and uh, you know you should download this, give it to anybody you know, share it on WhatsApp, all platforms. We are so happy to have you today, and uh, it's been a pleasure hosting my brother. Uh, see you next uh, next week. Sign out. Mm -hmm.